Today we're going to be making five cards using just one stamp set and I've got some great tips to share on how to stretch your stamp sets. So the set that we're going to be using today is called Sketched Santas and it has a lot of fun images and sentiments in it and I would start by looking at the stamp set that you want to use and just start thinking about how the images can be used in different ways. So for me I like to create sketches and I'll just sit down and throw some ideas on paper. They don't always work when you start to create but at least it gives you a starting point. And with that starting point this is going to really help me make multiple cards quickly because I already know how many images I'm going to be needing. I already know what designs I'm going to be using and I like to batch things out. So one of my designs had a block of six squares so I just kind of worked out um, layering nesting die that would fit on my card front suiting that would suit this design but you could also cut this with a trimmer or use one of those purpose-built cover dies that already has the six windows in it. So I did kind of mix up my images a bit. I did some partial stamping on some of the squares and here I'm also doing some partial stamping of one of the sentiments. I simply used a post-it note to mask off the section of the sentiment that I didn't want to stamp and I could actually come in and stamp the rest of the sentiment in the center of the card if I wanted. So like I said it is easier to batch things out. I already know how I want to use these images and where I want to put some of my sentiments so to do most of the stamping straight up is much easier while you've already got your tools out ready to go. One of my ideas was to create a group of images and you could do this a couple of different ways. I decided to do almost a one layer card here so I did create a mask for my center Santa and then I could just come in and stamp the Santas on either side. If you have a coordinating die it might actually be quicker just to quickly stamp and color three different images of or group or whatever you're creating and then die cut them out and then you can actually attach them to the front of the card and not have to worry about cutting masks. <laughs> Fussy cutting not everyone likes to do it. So we're back on the batching now. I've got all of my images stamped out. I'm using a really nice bright white cardstock here that actually tolerates water pretty well and I will link that in the description below. It's from Crafty Critter and I've been using this quite a bit recently. Overall I'm not a real fan of the yellow color of watercolor cardstock on cards so this is working really well for me. So when you're batching it out I would recommend using similar colors over the set of cards because that way you're not having to rethink your color schemes each time because that does take time and brain energy and by having the same color scheme throughout all of the cards it just takes the guesswork out of it and makes it much easier to do. I have also painted in sections so that just by painting faces separately to beards and clothing and presents it means that these images can dry in between because I am watercoloring here and I don't want the colors to blend and create mud. So it's actually kind of easier when you're watercoloring to do multiples at once because you can come back in to another image and by the time you get back to the first one the watercolor will be dry. Another thing that you can do when you're doing your initial stamping is stamp a couple of extras or a couple of practice images and this is totally up to you. It is easier to sort of do everything all at once but if you have to come back and just stamp one more it can be just a little frustrating <laughs> but it's sometimes handy to have a couple of extra images and then you just throw them together and make an extra bonus card at the end. Sometimes I'll do this as well. Another thing that I like to look at in my sets is is there something that I can use a partial image for and you'll see this 
on a couple of different cards here and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So I do like to ground my images and I'm using kind of a warm grey to do that here. You might notice that I'm painting across the base of the Santas but I do go up slightly at each edge and this is going to give it a better scent, sense of depth. Right, so everything dried pretty quickly. I did do some fussy cutting here because I don't own the coordinating dies and because these are sketched images uh, something like a scan and cut probably wouldn't work so well here either. I do know that sketched images can be a little bit intimidating for some people to use so that's why I thought I would share some ideas here today. This first card here is the most simple. It's very clean and simple stamped image add a pale grey background to the front of my card and then I can pop up the panel of the Santa with the sentiment. I'm basically using the stamp set pretty much how it's intended. These sketchy Santas are awesome just on their own especially with these sentiments there's a really nice combination of sentiments in this particular set as well. The second card that I made is the graphic block design here and I've added some dark grey cardstock to the front of my card and then popped up the squares of Santa. You might notice that I've also done a bit of partial stamping on these. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can do it like I did and do the die cutting or the cutting of the squares first and then stamp or you can actually stamp the images and then die cut after. This technique can work well if you've got multiple images in your stamp set but it can also be great if you have a very large image like a big Christmas tree and then you can cut the image into six and then place it on the front of the card or use circles instead of squares or rectangles you could do three laying beneath each other. Right so on to my third card now I am doing some more partial stamping so I decided to make some little speech bubbles saying ho and I'm just using some white embossing powder on the dark grey cardstock and left enough space between the words that I can die cut them in a small circle and I've just used nesting dies here yet again. Looking at your sentiments and actually using them differently to how they're intended is going to help you stretch your set. So don't forget to have a look at your sentiments and think well you can mask that section off and then add a die cut word so that you've got happy as a die cut and birthday as a stamp. There are so many options in these sets for you to make them work harder for you. So I did pop these little sentiments up for the Santas and added some little triangles to make them look like speech bubbles and I think this looks really unique and fun on what's otherwise a very clean and simple design. But like I say this would work well if you've got a coordinating die set you can pop these images up instead of creating a masked scene. Speaking of scenes my next two cards are using these Santas to create a scene and I want to do a rooftop chimney. So here I've got a couple of embossing folders which are going to add some texture and a couple of stencils that I could have used to create. I was thinking maybe a corrugated iron would work well with the stripes or um, the water stencil from Altenew I thought would work well to create like a stone wall as well. I ended up going with the embossing folders because I thought the texture is going to be fun anyway and ran some dark grey and some light grey cardstock and then just to add a little bit of something extra I swiped some grey ink across the brickwork. Well now it's brickwork <laughs> for the chimney. Now I knew that I wasn't going to be using this Santa's legs for this particular scene so I didn't bother colouring them at the time so I knew that in advance that this Santa was going to be the one coming down the chimney. When I designed my cards originally with the sketch I didn't waste my time colouring his lower portion of his body in. So thinking ahead really can make a difference. I just cut pieces of cardstock here uh, to make the top of the chimney 
and then cut down the brickwork to make the chimney. I did think about making it quite thin because <laughs> it is thinner than the Santa, but he's magical. Of course, he'll get down there. There's no problems. And you'll see in the next card what happens. <laughs> I did add some dimension, just some really thin foam dots here to pop him up onto the roof of the house. And adding other details can really take these clean and simple cards to the next level. I came in with some fake snow. I love this stuff. I hoard it and I should use it. <laughs> it adds dimension and texture. The other thing I thought about doing was just adding a piece of white cardstock, maybe with a bit of grey marker and cut it on a swirl. I could even add some glistening lunar paste to it for a snowy roof as well which brings us to the next scene and Santa did make it through the fireplace we just have to create the fireplace so I made some more brickwork and used a border circle die if you don't have something like this you could just put two circle dies together and create an arched fireplace the other thing you could do is just cut rectangles and make a rectangle fireplace just a, a regular one would work just as well I needed to cut away the center and I didn't want to have it exactly the same size I could have I just used a pencil here to do that could use a, another die to cut that section away I don't like rerunning it through a die, mach die cutting machine because you can lose some dimension from the embossing folder but it still would work and I often like to use a bit of liquid glue to adhere all my images and scenes together here because it just gives me some time if I need to move something around before it's stuck solidly and I kept it really easy I decided to draw in the base of the fireplace I just did this with a pencil and I know it's not perfect it doesn't need to be no one's going to notice I came in with a ruler and a black marker this is um, 0.3 Copic multi-liner but you can use whatever you have and then I thought it'd be good to come in and actually color the base of the fireplace and I used a Copic marker to do that you could use a pencil here you could even use a piece of cardstock if it's a darker color and just place that there creating scenes gives you so many options when you're looking at your stamp sets if you have something like a Santa what a fun idea to have him coming down a chimney all I need to color in is his feet <laughs> the other thing you could do is actually have him coming head first down the chimney that could be fun too I thought about putting some snow at the bottom of the chimney I also thought I could put a fire there but I did keep all my cards pretty clean and simple today and I hope this inspires you to look at your stamp sets a little differently and get some ideas like I've done here with five different cards very different cards using the one stamp set and I'll run through them all again starting with this very clean and simple kind of as intended these sketchy Santas are fun the second one we created a graphic design using partial images stamped and colored and then we popped it up on a dark gray background next I created a group of images and I did some masking there for that one and separated the sentiment then we created a couple of scenes starting with Santa coming down the chimney and he made it <laughs> Santa came down the chimney so I created a fireplace and I'd love to know if you have a favorite card today and if you do let me know in the comments which one it is I hope you're inspired to look at your stamp sets and maybe create something just a little bit different and if you did like today's card please click on the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already what are you waiting for it's absolutely free I look forward to seeing you at the next two videos right here which are from my last two years of Same But Different Christmas series.